Well, hello, good people. In today's video, we're going to continue our Comfy UI 101 series. And this one is kind of a little bit of an offshoot. And I'm going to show you how to create an XY plot. Now, if you're not sure what an XY plot is, here's a quick example where I have steps from 20 to 50. And I also have four samplers here so that we can see the differences between samplers. And that's the main benefit of an XY plot where you can customize these settings, whether it's CFG, steps, models, LORAs, and you can do some visual comparisons. Now, to get started, we're going to need a custom node package. So let's head over into our manager here. And as always, make sure Comfy UI is fully updated. You can do it from the manager. Just click update all here and restart Comfy UI. So head over to custom nodes manager and we want to search for tiny and this is the one we're going to install tiny Terra nodes. I wonder if Terra really is tiny. You want to click on the checkbox there, click on install. And then it's going to prompt you to restart. I'm going to go ahead and do that to restart Comfy UI. Now the workflow we're going to go through can be used for both SDXL and Flux. However, with Flux, there is a bit of a difference and we'll go over that later. For now, just right click add node and you're going to see an option for tiny Terra. Click on that. Next, you want to click on base and then just like any other workflow, we need some sort of loader. So let's select tiny loader. Let's take a look at this node really quickly. You'll notice it has your usual connections for model, VAE, and clip, but you see there's an extra one for the latent. This node combines all of those nodes into one. We're going to start with SDXL. You can pick whatever model you want to try. I'm going to use Juggernaut. You don't need to touch any of these. For VAE, we're going to leave it on baked. There's a clip skip option here, which isn't really needed for what we're doing today and then we're just going to do a square one to one ratio one and then there's a batch size option here so next we need some sort of conditioning node so once again let's right click add node tiny terra we'll go into base once again and then tiny conditioning and then we just simply have to connect the inputs as we always do model to model clip to clip now let's take a look at this node as well. And here you're going to see we have an area for a positive and negative prompt. We could put in a LoRa here if we wanted to. So if I click in this area, we can put in a LoRa manually here. And then these settings, we don't need to change anything. But the one that you might be interested in is if you're familiar with waiting, we haven't talked about waiting, but there are different versions. There's an automatic 1111 version. There's a comfy version. You can down wait. Basically, this is a method of waiting certain words so they have more prominence in the prompt. Again, we don't need that today. I can save that for a future video. And just like any of our other workflows, we need some sort of sampler. So once again, we're going to go into add node, tiny Terra. This node name is so fun to say, tiny Terra. <laughs> and then we're going to go into base once again, and then look for tiny K sampler. Now, once we have the K sampler loaded here, as always, we want to connect our inputs from conditioning to the case sampler, so model to model, positive to positive, negative to negative. It's really helpful that it's color coordinated. And we want to grab latent and VAE from the loader node. So we have latent and VAE here. So we're going to connect VAE to VAE, latent to latent. And yes, as you know me already, I like to have the nodes rerouted so that I can see them. I'm going to fix this up just a little bit here. Oh, and actually we're going to move these nodes more. So let's make some space, bring this over here for now. And we're going to select both of these, bring it over. And then we're going to zoom in and bring in the XY plot node. Right click, add node, tiny Terra. This time we're going to select XY plot, advanced XY plot. I'm going to adjust this just a bit here. And the only thing we need to connect from this node is this input to advance XY plot. Simple and easy. Now at this point, all we need to do is include some image nodes. So let's grab the image input and the plot image input. 
I'm going to just simply drag this out and select save image. I like to save the image because for whatever reason, if you want the individual image, it's nice to have it. Otherwise you can use the preview option and then we'll do the same for the plot image node. This is where we're going to actually get the XY plot image. Once again, we're going to select the save image node resize it. As mentioned in previous videos, we can create a folder along with a custom file name. So in this case, I put XY plot followed by a forward slash SDXL XY examples. We're going to hit OK. And I'm going to name the same thing except for examples. We'll change to grid for the actual plot. And as always, you can go ahead and right click over the node and give it a color of your choice. I'm going to select all of these and choose, I don't know, maybe like a purple color. And so we have our basic XY plot layout. Now how this works is we zoom in here and we take a look at the advanced XY plot node here. The first section here, you want grid spacing. I usually use 10 or 15. That's the spacing in between the images here. If you want to save the individual images, you can toggle that to true or false. And the flip XY is pretty self-explanatory. Let's say I had CFG at the top steps on the side. If you wanted to flip those, you can toggle this to true to flip them. That way you don't have to manually do anything. I'm going to leave it off for now. Now, the first thing we need to do is identify a label. If you look at the example here, this is kind of the formula that you need to follow. You have the ID of whatever it is you're doing, like CFG or steps and then you give it a value. It's pretty simple. Click in this area. You're going to see a little drop down here. And there are going to be several values for you. The first one is the add plot line. This is where we're going to enter our label value. You have three options, only value label, title and value label, ID title and value label. Let's select only value label. Now, when you select just the label, it's going to output only the settings that you use. So in this case, I have steps at the top and CFG at the bottom. So you can see 2.5, 3.5 for CFG, or actually in this case, it's flux guidance and 20 and 30 steps. If we select title and value label, the title of the setting you're using. So in this example, steps and guidance is going to be displayed on your XY plot. And then the third one here with ID, you see it says ID. That's just the number you see here on the left. So it's identifying the setting that you're using. In this case, steps is one and 12 is guidance. And that's going to make more sense once we fill in the rest of the XY plot settings. So let's start with something simple. We're going to do CFG and steps. So once again, click anywhere in the node and let's do title and value. We're going to click anywhere in the node. And this time we want to select this one here where it says tiny sampler. Everything you see here is going to be within that sampler. So we have our steps and our CFG here. We also have scheduler. We have samplers, Laura name, Laura strength, so on and so forth. So you can pretty much use anything that's in the workflow. Okay, let's use CFG. And then we're going to select this number eight here. This is currently what it's set at. And we're just going to put a value of three. So CFG three, the three here is just the identifier of CFG. Okay. Now what you can do is let's do like say three images and I'm going to copy and paste all of these and just change the CFG to five and then this one to seven. That way we have a CFG from left to right, three, five, and seven. And then we're going to go to the Y section here now and do the same thing. We're going to give it a title and value. Then we're going to input steps. We're going to copy and paste. And I don't know, let's do 25 and 30. So we have 20, 25, and 30. Then the last thing we want to do with these labels is change the numbers here. So we have one, two, and three, and we're going to do the same here and label these one, two, and three. That I believe should be it. Let's go ahead and click on Q. 
So here we have the result of the XY plot. As mentioned, we have the individual images saved in our folder here. And if we click on this, we can sift through them individually. And on the right is our actual XY plot. I'm going to open this up. And if we look at the X plot left to right, we see CFG 3, 5, and 7. On the Y plot are steps 20, 25, and 30. Now this is for SDXL. For Flux, we just need to make a slight adjustment. And as you recall, Flux uses Flux Guidance, right? Let's add that node, right click, go into Advanced. Under Conditioning, we're going to select Flux and we're going to select Flux Guidance. Let's give it a color. We'll keep it the same purple. And because it's conditioning, we do want to put it between these two points. I'm just going to put it at the top here and bring this down a little bit. And then we just need to connect positive to conditioning and this conditioning to positive. Just a reminder, whenever you're working with Flux, to always change your CFG to one here. Your steps will be ignored since you put it in the XY plot node. Then you just have to set your sampler. I'll leave it on Euler. Normal is fine, but I like to use beta or simple. Now, quick thing to mention, if we're using the all-in-one flux model, so in my case, the FP8 version, where is it? There we go. I'm going to select that. The one thing you do have to change is the clip skip. It does not use clip skip. So if I were to run this, it's going to error out at this point. There you go. And it tells you set clip skip to zero. So keep that in mind when you are using a flux all-in-one model change this value to zero. And then we can go ahead and click generate. Now, in case it's not obvious, obviously you're running, in this case, nine images. So it's going to take some time for it to generate, especially with Flux. Now, just a few things to mention here. Again, if you're using an all-in-one model for Flux, you can go ahead and bypass this by right-clicking, select bypass, and it'll be ready for you to use with SDXL models. Now, if you wanted to use the GUF models instead, you can load them as you normally would with the unit loader, the GUF dual clip loader. And of course, you'd need to load the load VAE node as well. And you would need also the MT latent image and then just connect them manually as you normally would. I'm going to get rid of this and I do want to kind of mention how LoRa's work here and I'm just going to show you really quickly how you can do this for LoRa's. Let's click into this area here, select a tiny sampler and right at the top you'll see LoRa name. You should see your LoRa's available. So I'm just going to pick the Flex Turbo Alpha one and right underneath we have to do the same thing. We're going to select the LoRa strength. So you'll need both of these if you're comparing like two or three LoRa's. And then you would just adjust your strength here. So let's say 0 0.8. And then once again, let's say we wanted to compare two LoRa's. Just need to change this label to two and then change this one to another LoRa of your choice. And I put the same one, but you get my point. The other thing I want to point out is that you can do the same thing with checkpoints for SDXL, but checkpoints for Flux doing it this way pulls up errors at the moment. I'm not sure why that is. I remember when I first started doing this, it didn't happen. I'm not sure if it's a bug with this custom node package, but I thought I'd let you know. Currently, XY plots for Flux checkpoints will give you errors. And if I figure it out, I'll definitely let you know. So that's XY Plots 101 for both SDXL and Flux. You can definitely do a lot more with XY plotting. I'll probably do a part two of this video eventually. As always, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And if this happens to be your first video, make sure to check out the other five or six videos in this series, which will be right here. Until the next video, my friend, I'll see you when I see you.